All right, this video is how to do coordinate conversions, but today it's about taking a rectangular coordinate and making it into polar form. Okay. All right, so we'll be converting from um, rectangular to polar, rectangular to polar, um, and then you're going to give three polar names, okay? And including one that has a negative radius. Okay, so here's our rectangular x and y. We want it in R in theta. So here's what you're going to do every single time. R squared is going to be your x coordinate squared plus your y coordinate squared. So this is 3 plus 1, which is 4. But I've got to take the square root, so r is plus or minus 2. Right? Over here, theta i got to find theta. So the tangent of theta, I know, is the y-coordinate over the x-coordinate. But that means I have to rationalize over 3. So now what is theta? Well, theta is the inverse tangent of square root of 3, negative square root of 3 over 3. All right, so let's think about this. If you graph this point, if I go back to the original point, square root of 3 is like 1.7 something, something, something. That's positive and negative 1. So that point is somewhere around over here. Okay? So I know this angle is down in here. And I think about which angle has a tangent value of negative square root of 3 over 3. Hopefully you remember the trick I showed you with tangents, that if you have 3 over 3, they add up to 6. So it's the pi over 6 angles that have this tangent value. It would be negative in quadrant 4. So what angle has pi over 6 and quadrant 4? This would be 11 pi over 6. Okay? Now, before you go crazy and try to finish this, think about this. There's another name for this same angle. 11 pi over 6 is what I get if I go counterclockwise. But what if I go clockwise? It's just the negative name, which is negative pi over 6. All right? That will give us our first two coordinates. So r would be positive 2, because x's are positive here. Our radius is positive and 11 pi over 6, there's my first coordinate pair. The second one, the radius stays the same. The, R, the theta value is the negative name of the same angle, so it's negative pi over 6. And then lastly, I have to, I have to get one with a negative radius, so to change it to negative 2. Remember, when you do that, you have to go the opposite direction, okay? So if you need to, go back and look at your unit circle, and what angle is 180 degrees away from there? Well, it would be the pi over 6 angle down he up here in quadrant 2, which is 5 pi over 6. All right, so now I have my three names for the same point in polar form. All right, let's try another one. Let's try this one. Negative 5, negative 5. So r squared is going to be negative 5 squared plus negative 5 squared. So it's 25 plus 25 plus r squared. So r squared equals 50. Take the square root. Okay, we know 50 is 25 times 2, so I can take a 5 out. It's plus or minus 5 squared to 2. That is my r. The theta, negative 5 over negative 5. Well, that's 1, right? So theta is where is the tangent, inverse tangent, positive 1. Remember, inverse tangent, um, only quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. Okay, if you recall, for tangent to be 1, positive 1, that means it's in quadrant 1 or quadrant 3. Okay, and that's the pi over 4 angles. So this is pi over 4. If I take 180 degrees down here, this angle is 5 pi over 4. And then if I went in the opposite direction, negative degrees. So you're like, well, how do I know where to start? Well, start where this point was, okay? At negative 5, negative 5, if you plotted that point, it's over here and down here, right? If we would do down here. So that's where I start with my radius, okay? So that means my radius is 5 square roots of 2. And what's that angle right there? It is 5 pi over 4, all right? So there's the first name of that angle. The next one, I'm going to keep the radius the same, and I'm going to rename this angle, okay? What could I rename it? Well, if you flip it across the x-axis, remember, to give it its negative name, what angle's right there? 
3 pi over 4, but I would call it negative 3 pi over 4 because I flipped it, okay? Remember that? Use your unit circle to remember how we flip the angles. And then lastly, to get the negative radius value, okay, if I go the opposite direction, what angle is that? Well, that's the pi over 4 angle. Okay, I hope that makes some sense. We're going to do one more example, help you know where to start these angles. All right, one more. 0 and negative 5. All right, r squared, x is 0, negative 5 squared. So r squared is 25, so that means r get the square root, I get plus or minus 5, okay? Now over here, I want the tangent of theta when y is negative 5 and x is 0. Well, that's undefined, right? Okay, so now think about your graph. Where is the tangent undefined? That means where is the x value 0? Well, right up here, x is 0, pi over 2. Down here, x is 0, 3 pi over 2. Another name for this angle, if I went in the negative direction, is negative 3 pi over 2. Or this could be negative pi over 2, right? Okay, so we have all these different names. Now, let's figure out where do we start. 0 to negative 5. If I plotted that point, that really is down here. This is my beginning point, okay? So my angle, oops, my radius then is uh, 5, 3 pi over 2. That's my starting point, okay? Another name for this angle right here is negative pi over 2, so it's 5, negative pi over 2. And then lastly, if I take it across the axis and move it up here, I could say negative 5 and pi over 2, positive pi over 2, okay? Really, you could use either one of these names up here. It would be correct. So I have three names, all right? So you'll get the hang of this changing the angle thing. You just got to look at where is the original point. That's your starting point, all right? We'll do some more examples in class. I hope this makes sense. Talk to you soon.